Okay, calling the meeting to order at 7.39. Uh, and we have uh, David Harris and John Leo and Angus Chen and myself in the meeting and the guests are Pat Shanley. Um, need somebody to take minutes. I see David is chewing. I can, <coughs> I can take minutes. Yeah. Give me a minute. So um, I'm trying to keep this meeting as brief as possible because I think that the sense of our uh, commission the other night when we were discussing it was favorable towards this proposal. And maybe we want to ask some questions or David, discuss details. Thanks. Uh, but um, <clears throat> let's see what, uh, how much uh, we need to discuss in detail. Um, so first uh, point is simply that um, uh, Pat Shanley wants to uh, uh, propose to the county uh, that uh, Woods and Wayside International uh, would uh, lease the home and property at 151 Grant Street for an initial period of five years. And under this agreement, uh, WWI, that's Wood and Wayside International, would use the house as a part-time office and field station to promote outdoor recreation and conservation in the adjacent section of the Park Passaic River Parkway. And I'm going to also call it the Passaic River County Park. Um, and the WWI's activities would include uh, continued stewardship and caretaking of the trails, training of youth and community members to remove invasive species, creating interpretive materials on ecology and local history, and efforts to improve equitable public access to the Passaic River Parkway. Um, and as a lessee, WWI would assume responsibility for maintenance of the existing house and the property in which it is situated, this includes covering costs associated with the both interior and exterior upkeep, including repairs, landscaping, utilities. And so the cost to Union County would be de minimis. Um, and then the long-term objective is to create a forest stewardship field station to train youth and the broader public to become stewards for key sections of the River Parkway. So I'd, I'm hoping that we don't have to go through the whole um, proposal. I think that's the essentials of the proposal, but uh, I'm going to uh, first ask uh, Pat and Chris if they have any additional comments. Well, I, I guess the one additional comment um, that I would make is that, you know, this was a proposal that we submitted to Union County in August um, and, you know, as we indicated in the proposal and certainly in our follow on discussions this past week after uh, meeting all of you on the trail cleanup day, you know, we're really interested in partnering, um, you know, with local organizations and, and groups in and around Berkeley Heights. And we would be absolutely delighted to partner with the Berkeley Heights Environmental Commission. And, um, you know, perhaps in this meeting or at any other time we could discuss what that might entail. But um, you know, we would see that as being a real opportunity that would strengthen the proposal and, um, and would you know, really enhance and allow a, you know, us together to scale up the activities that we're envisioning. Okay, thanks, thanks, Chris. Uh, any comments or questions from the commission? <clears throat> How, um, so thank, thank you for that, guys. Um, is there an example of how this has happened already? So Princeton, anywhere else, is there a way where this is already maintaining and running? Or is it a copy or is this a new idea? This is building on existing work that we've been doing for about nine years here in Princeton. So, you know, we have a really good crew each year of students that are in, that we've been able to train that get a whole lot done on maintaining trails, restoring forests, 
and actually protecting forests. So these kids have become technically proficient in understanding what's native and what's invasive. And they've become real advocates and under, they understand the value of forests for uh, biodiversity, for um, in terms of climate regulation and in terms of water quality and in terms of their mental health. So we see all these knock on benefits and it's not that hard to do, but you really need to train people with the right set of skills and tools to be able to make that bridge between youth and the community and the forest, because there's such this chasm between nature and people today. And most of these trail crews that we see all throughout Mercer County are all retired folks. And that's just not gonna play well for keeping the forest standing for the future. So we really have to infect these kids with more vigor and interest and knowledge about forests and that's really lacking. There's been a great spark about climate change and there's all this future Fridays and all this, but there's not action about forests. And that's what we really need. You know, the forest is the component in terms of the future of the planet that are lacking. If forests are the answer for so many things, we just have a whole lot of um, lack of input and action from young people and the general public. So I think what we've done in many places, I mean, we do this in Indonesia, we've worked on it in Brazil, I'm working with you know, rural communities doing the same thing in Brazil. So it's not, and People and Plants International, another group we work with is doing it all over the world. So it's tapping into the love of nature and making that more technically uh, proficient to help the forest nearby. And you can only do it with groups. So we, everywhere we work, you sort of catalyze based on who's interested. And it's great that all of you have so much knowledge already. And this is just, I think, serving as sort of catalyst to accelerate maybe broader groups of people working on those trails and understanding the forest. So you see that there's something of a base here now where you can get volunteers and people to cooperate now? Is that, is that what just kind of sparked you recently in coming back to town, basically, is that you see that there's there might actually be a base for volunteerism. Um, so, so meeting all of yourselves and meeting Serena, I thought it was really interesting what Serena said, and it's in our proposal. She said, I'm really interested in environmental sciences and want to study it, but I have absolutely no experience. These kids aren't being given experience. So I think it's a role of adults who have some experience to lay that out so they can get it. And I've always been interested for years. We've had this proposal on the plate for years with Union County. We've always wanted the, the house to serve for the greater good of the public. And um, this is an opportunity, but I was really heartened to meet all of you and to meet yeah. Serena and know that there is definitely uh, a fertile ground and a community. And I know there's more people in the neighborhood. So I think it would not be hard to spark that. I think having some of our kids from Princeton come and speak to the environmental club at GL would be fabulous. Yeah, we were super excited by the turnout last Sunday and by the level of um, both enthusiasm and commitment that you all have yeah. clearly generated. And, you know, to see the work that went into pulling that, you know, that um, <laughs> oil tank out of the out of the creek and, you know, what was it, 12 bags of, uh, you know, bottles and other debris, you know, that's not easy work. and. Um, you know, in most places it doesn't get done, but it, we, we can see that you all have a, you know, a group that you've pulled together and, and that's just great. And, um, you know, I think the focus that, you know, we would be taking with the field station would be to, um, you know, really try to emphasize training, you know, high school aged uh, youth, you know, to pull the invasives and, and uh, steward the trails. And so the, what's the, what, I'm sorry, Trish, go ahead. And the broader community. What's the percentage of the, um, the relationship to the, the high school? Is it a direct, is it the primary relationship that you need to work with as the, the, um, the environmental sciences teachers and group at the high school or are they just the half of the partnership or a fraction of it? They choose, no, it's a broad range of students and they come for community service hours. So I believe at GL, there's also a, uh, uh, a requirement that a, you have to do a certain number of community service hours. Often those are sort of lightweight and they're not particularly energetic, they're not hard and they may not be teaching you anything. So this particular community service is by far the most rigorous 
You get the dirtiest, you work the hardest, you work all seasons. They insist on coming for the summer. They won't give me any time off. So they're always, they want to work all year long and they don't need to, to get the hours, but they go beyond their hours. So it's basically volunteer. It's all volunteer and it's across a range of disciplines. It's not an environmental club. Some of the climate change club people end up being part of ours to make a bridge between those two things, forest and climate. And then we also work with grammar schools. So these kids that we train as high schoolers are now going into the grammar schools to teach younger people. So we try to have this replicability and a sustainability. So it's low cost and so that it continues. And so we train the teachers also. So we're calling that the Emerald Necklace School Consortium. And we've saved, I mean, this group of students and the consortium we work with has saved quite, you know, a couple of hundred acres of help preserve land in Princeton as well. What do you think, what do you think the big hurdles to this project are? I'm eating it The hurdles. I have a question. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. So who's, I guess, at the end of the day, I mean, these are one of the logistical questions people are going to ask is, yeah. um, who's going to manage, you know, or, or, or uh, maintain responsibility for managing this, this, this initiative um, and managing the kids and, and anyone who, who is, you know, uh, uh, working on these, these uh, you know, initiatives? Um, who's going to be handling that? Because I'm sure there's going to be questions of oversight um, and, 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 you know, and, and also maintaining the house and all, all that as well. Yeah. yeah. So I think we would figure that out jointly. Currently, we, um, you know, we hire somebody to help do the students. I've done it for many years, but we've trained somebody up to do that. And we have different parents who uh, also offer to do that. So we have more adults coming in. It's really important to get adult participation. You know, we are leaving the planet to these kids and we have to put in time to ensure that they can inherit it in a better way than it is. So we've got quite a bit of, um, we're, I think one of the hurdles uh, to answer that question also is finding the adults willing to put time in and who wants to really work with youth. And so creating a team effort and then I think hiring, you know, we're willing here to hire somebody and we would be willing there to probably put funds into finding someone and a group of people. And I think we should do that together. You know, if the Berkeley Heights Environmental Commission was in, I would look to you to find those great people since you're on the ground there. But some of these students are phenomenal. And then some of them, one of them I hired took a gap year and we offer this gap year program. She took a gap year and took two years off and has been helping lead the students, which is a fabulous role model for the other students. Do you think we have to um, leverage the the, um, uh, the town, the township uh, government body to uh, provide either funding grants or any of these, are they gonna be able to, do they need to help? I think it's great if they want to and are uh, motivated to help something like this because it's such a public health benefit both for mental health for the improving of those trails to ensure those trails are safe and that they're therapeutically designed for maximum benefit of the public i think there's a lot of pros for the town i think most of the cost in terms of maintenance of the center would be covered and then but i think certainly uh cost benefit sharing everybody's involved that way and has a piece of it so, okay, in Princeton, who bears most of the cost then for uh, upkeep? So there's, you know, our garage is the field station center here <laughs> and our house is the place that we meet. So we just offer our home and our yeah. yard and it links to one of the newly preserved uh, forests. So there's not a whole lot of costs here. You know, we and bought- wouldn't be here either because it'd be on county property. So we're gonna ask them to provide some services to keep it. I, think, well, I, so, I would say it's a, it's a bit of a step up in terms of scale, right? So it's a, it is a standalone building with all of the yeah. um, obligations that come along with that, yeah. as opposed to being a garage. So there's mm -hmm. a, 
there's a cost and a set of responsibilities that go with that. Yeah, we've offered to cover those for the home and the garage and the property. So those will not be counted for the town or the county. We took them off the table because we believe that much in the mission, because we think the kids really need an opportunity. And I think that forest needs the opportunity to be carefully taken care of because ecologically the invasives are entering. And if they're not taken care of now, it can completely lose the integrity of that older growth. You know, it's a fairly older growth forest at one end. And that is so good to maintain. It's really important to maintain that. So I think this particular five years is critical for the health of that forest and for the health of students for that matter. Yeah. I would just add that, you know, while we don't envision that there would be much cost, if any, for the municipal government, you know, having their interest and support yeah. and you know, to the degree, uh, you know, they want to be involved, um, uh, you know, directly. Um, that would be extremely helpful, you know, for this kind of initiative. We've seen that here in Princeton, so it doesn't, it doesn't need to have a budgetary implication. But you know, having the institutional support <coughs> would be a really helpful thing. And that's do you envision the need to hire staff to? Um, support this operation in Berkeley Heights? What I've done, what we've done here is we have one person who can run the students who come once a week for like three hours. Okay. And we find, you know, there could be more students, like there's a lot of interest for younger kids as well. So all the parents are asking, can the younger sibling come too? But I think starting out with just high school students, like once a week for a few hours, is a good way to start. The reason we put in a five-year lease is that's one thing that is commonly done, but also we thought that would give time to cover the cost to figure out who the collaborators were and to build in other sources of funding over that time frame. And I would, I would just add to clarify that the coordinator of the youth group here in Princeton um, has been hired by our organization, by which one. You know, that's not from the town. Give us so, a sense of um, how long from, say, um, whenever an, an agreement is signed to this being operational? That would depend a lot on you're the folks on the ground. And so I think that's where your expertise and contacts would come in to figure out like who's interested. We could certainly get, um, we could do the youth piece, like meeting with the uh, GL, but I think uh, some of your intel on the ground would be helpful to find out who would adults like yourselves want to learn these skills and who might be interested to help lead. It's just like adopt a park, okay? The doctor trail program at Watching Reservation. There's some similarities, but this was geared towards youth. And I think there could be, you know, three hours a week that's adults and then three hours a week that's, that certainly one of you could lead easily. And I think, you know, if that was needed or wanted, I think, um, but I would be looking towards you, I think, for rallying some of this interest because you live in the community. And Governor Livingston, right? And Governor so that, that, right, and that raises a question that I wanted to ask David because David's involved with the scouts. Would okay. the scouts be perhaps a, uh, a group that uh, could be interested in doing this? So the scouts always have some interest in um, volunteer opportunities. Um, they also have their own set of activities that, that that go on both during the week and on weekends. So I don't, I'm not sure there'd be a group of scouts who'd be doing this on a like a regular uh, weekly basis. I mean, they it would certainly be a set of opportunities we could tap into for the scouts on an occasional basis, but perhaps not recurring. Okay. The, uh, so from my experience on the commission back, going back to 2008, um, uh, working in the Passaic River Park, uh, I am not recalling many occasions when uh, young people, the high school students were involved with the park. <clears throat> Once it was to plant uh, trees, uh, uh, 
more recently because we've had these cleanups. We've had some children, but always with parents uh, coming in to, to clean up. But that's been like once a year, maybe twice a year. Um, it sounds like uh, Pat and Chris are talking about it could be more often. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, certainly, uh, if there's a way to identify teenagers who could be helped by doing this, who aren't necessarily involved with the scouting program, well, that would be great. Um, so there's two parts to this whole thing. I've, and the reason why I asked to have this meeting tonight was because this proposal is in front of the county and the county is saying they have to vac vacate the house by the end of the month. And uh, uh, we, I thought perhaps we could uh, pass a resolution saying we basically support this uh, proposal uh, to uh, for WWI to uh, basically lease this uh, house. So that would be part one. And secondly, perhaps we can say uh, that the Environmental Commission is also interested in uh, collaboration with WWI. We don't have to draw up a contract at this point, but we could say we are really strongly interested in, in working together because uh, we've got other parks in town that are Green Acres and Pat mentions Green Acres uh, as part of that proposal. So it does, it could include other Green Acres forested areas. Is that correct, Pat? Yeah, definitely. We we work in all the parks throughout Princeton and that's part of the fun. So you learn ecology and habitats and you, we work in pocket parks, like tiny little ones. And it's really fat and old growth and younger growth, some that are covered with invasive species. So it really helps deepen in a profound way the students' connection to place and their understanding of ecology that way. So it's a great thing to work in different parks all over. And then they're near their neighborhood or their friend's neighborhood. It's a great way to uh, get to know where you live. And the other thing from the point of view of the uh, Environmental Commission is that we have a community forestry management program. And that program has not addressed the forests of the town. That is, the, uh, it has addressed the urban forest in the sense of the street trees, but it hasn't addressed the uh, forests that are green acres. And uh, there is apparently a provision in the grants to do that. And I'm I'm not saying that there's, but you have to look, uh, we have to look at what uh, the state is offering through the community forestry management plan in the form of grant money for the forests. I uh, I don't, I haven't gotten a chance to do that. And that will become available next year in, yeah. the, in the spring. So, uh, um, sorry, Richard. No, no, go ahead, John. I was gonna put this out uh, and try to make this as clear as I can, but I think I, <clears throat> I'm on, I want to, uh, I obviously want to move forward with this. I just want, I, I think <clears throat> we're actually asking the Environmental Commission and our organizations within this township to actually, I think, step up our game, which is neat because I, I like, <clears throat> I, I, I think we should take that on, but we, I also think that our, our, our volunteerism here, maybe we've over promised it from what you saw on the weekend. Or maybe you're more familiar and we are more capable compared to what you know from Princeton, but I think Princeton might have their game together a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a challenge what we could take on and we should. Obviously, there's a lot riding on it, but it definitely is. At, and you made that very clear that we, for us to make this do this, this is not you coming in and providing a service. This is, we have to uh, partnership, we have to get volunteers. And though we would probably have to keep that pretty continuous, we won't have to have a volunteer there every day of every week. And if there's a training course that can't happen on a given weekend, it, it can be skipped. It's not, it's not important. What's important is that 52 weeks of the year, you maybe get 16, 25 or 30 training sessions in a year and you've captured 100, 200, 300 volunteers and students. So I think that that's not so burdensome. We can do that as long as we're not committing to something that has to be done every Sunday at eight o'clock, right? Yeah, it could so, be one more time. Yeah. I think we I think as long as you're 
you guys are familiar with the fact that we probably do have to step up our game. I don't think the, our infrastructure is there, but we, I, I, I think, I think we should take on that challenge. So what has been the feedback? Um, I wanted to say something. Um, let's go, go ahead. On. Yeah, I, I think what the feedback have been from Union County to this point. The, the feedback from Union County hasn't been, uh, they, I seem to want the house vacated and then have the discussion. So they seem to want to cut the contract. You know, that is about what I think, right? Yeah, it's, it seems like right now their focus is on the vacate date by November 30th. Yeah, and and uh, we've agreed to that and we're moving towards it and we're gonna meet that. Yeah. Um, and they, um, have indicated that any discussion of the proposal would would happen after that. So um, we're not awesome. through their internal process, but we're willing to you know work with whatever process um, we need to. Okay, I mean that sounds appropriate to me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, go ahead. Yeah, no, that, that sounds appropriate to me. I was I was I was concerned that um, we were getting. Sort of the notion of this 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 field station tangled up with sort of um, the, the vacate dates and maybe your continued um, management of the property. And I, I felt those things look could look like a, a potential conflict of interest. So I'm happy with the with the notion that um, you go ahead vacate the property end of November then the county can look at this from a, with a, um, a, sort of a, clean, a clean slate on, on, its, on its merits. And there's no, there's no convolution with whether or not you're the current occupants of the property. I think that's a much cleaner way of doing it. And I think, uh, and, I, and I find it a more, um, more easy, even much more easily, easily supported in that way. So that, I, I think that's good news. And and to be clear, the proposal has gone in, you know, from Woods and Wayside International, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. And, you know, as directors of the nonprofit, you know, we have a fiduciary responsibility. And so, you know, we would be acting, um, you know, to maintain an arm's length. You know, this is not about retaining personal access, you know, to the house as a residence. Um, we have a residence. Right. Good. Yeah. But I've... In, in the in the two years that John and I have been um, tramping through the woods and trying to get the um, understand what's there and trying to get um, interest in the trails, trying to get the trails in place, um, I, I've I've seen the invasives. I've and especially after this, this Sunday when you sort of walked us through that piece of the woods, um, I'm, I'm really very very much aware of how choked. The woods are with invasives, at least in in many parts. So I'm completely on board with that. Um, I'm very enthused with the idea of um, getting some community involvement towards um, getting this, getting the woods cleared out, and then maintaining them in that way. Um, I I do think it's a lot of work. So it's it's certainly it's it is a very significant. Um, challenge to take on but I think I think it's um it's certainly um worth taking on and I'm I'm interested in in um in moving ahead with that um and then the notion of of engaging kids I think is a really good one so overall I I do um I do very much support the principles of the, the ideas of of um that are behind this um I do think there's a lot of unanswered questions in my mind as to how we get from that as a, as a set of goals to actually making this happen on the ground. Angus, Angus, are you there? So I just want to add, um, I think from a sustainability perspective, in terms of sustaining the program, not necessarily sustainability, um, I think, you know, especially using this base of operation, I think long term, um, it might be wise to since Dan Bernier supports uh, this, this initiative as well. I think um, expanding it to, 
you know, not just um, Berkeley Heights and using it as larger thing would probably, you know, allow it to kind of run a little bit more smoothly, potentially, you know, if you have a greater variety of people who are involved rather than, you know, just, you know, I mean, there are a lot of residents and, and, and kids in Berkeley Heights, but, you know, beyond that, it'd be an opportunity for them to meet and, you know, and of course expand the reach. So um, I think, I think, you know, down the road, I know this is not a little hard to, 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 to initiate right now, you know, because of what they, what they're looking for. But I think overall um, on a county level, you know, I think that would probably provide more sustainability um, to the program overall beyond just Berkeley Heights. Because I know as administrations change, environmental commissions change, you know, sometimes I worry like if we're not there to, to support this, you know, things will start to kind of wane a little bit. And, you know, we don't want that, something like that to happen. So um, I do have to jump off, but uh, I wanted to say I support the program. And is there a resolution we need to uh, vote on? Shortly before it would be good I if we could. But, uh, you know, now that we're, I mean, we're not saying that, well, let, let me read a, a, a draft of what uh, a motion could be that the EC supports the WWI proposal for a five year lease of the helm at 151 grant. And uh, uh, for carrying out environmental activities. Does that work for people? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And I, I would second if that's the motion. Okay. Any discussion from the members? <clears throat> no, I can, I can support that as well. Richard, I wonder if I could just ask a clarifying question. Yes, um, please. Would the Environmental Commission want to consider um, collaborating on the proposal itself? So, yes. you know, revising the proposal so it's a joint proposal, we would resubmit it together and, you know, have any follow on discussions, negotiations with Union County um, together. All right. right. I like that idea. Uh, that, without, yes. being, without being too specific, I think that the commissioners, I mean, you people, David and John and Angus have to say this, without being too specific at this point as to exactly what we're doing, it's not a contract, it's more like a vision and a goal to collaborate with WWI uh, in caring for our forests. So we would collaborate, proposing that we could collaborate with WWI on, on this um, on this proposal, which would include right. stewardship. Rich, I have to jump off the um, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, I got the vote impression, on this Agus, that you support this. I support this, yes. As do I. Okay, John and David? Yes, as, as stated, yeah. And I can look at the proposal some other time to, to help with that. I support the wording that you first read, Richard. I, I'm, it's not so clear to me that we could, this, this could be a joint proposal. I think that's a much more complicated idea. And I don't we, think we, we're in a position to say that. We should just state our support for it tonight and hold there. That's, I could be on board. I'm on board. With okay. It. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we've got two aspects to the motion. One is it supports the proposal of WWI for its five year lease of 151 grant and secondly it is interested in collaborating with WWI mm -hmm. on in continued stewardship and caretaking of of trails and training of youth and community members yes yes yep. okay. thanks Angus all right thank you yeah thank uh, you Angus thank you Angus okay. All right, so now, now Angus is left for, without, without a quorum, so we, I think we have achieved what I was hoping we would. Um, and so I'm ready to sign off. We've kept it to just a little over a half hour. Pat I've got a Chris, quick comment before talk. we do drop off, if I could. But should, we end, the, right? should we end the meeting since we lost right, the but I just want to, right, I just want to finish that, you know, we should talk 
uh, at some later date, either at a EC meeting or uh, at some other and some other forms. So now, David, you wanted to say something. Yeah, just to um, go back to a point that Angus made right at the end there. Um, knowing Union County, I, I, I very much think that um, they would want this to be more of a countywide program rather than a town program because the the building is on county property um, and from an equity standpoint this asset the forest should be an asset of the county and not of the people of the town so i very much think that they would expect for this to be um these, this program to be structured in such a way that it's uh it's for the uh people of the county or the kids of the county um rather than being too much of a berkeley heights program so the, to, to that end david um that union county connects is what i was mentioning to trish about this is that i they're going to be they're getting very good at integrating with the freeholders and everybody they need to talk to and, and they're developing their 501c we're going to go to a a consultant this week to review our application but they're going to be they know that union county is very delicate and so so they're going to really work to be that i think that could be our vehicle to do that mm -hmm. and uh <clears throat> steven the other day being there was on board with having this element because as their trail development coordinator, I was saying that this program is pinnacle to everything because when we're building trails, we want to do it with this being the scope of it, not just to build the trail to uh, as a piece of transportation, which has been the focus, but this should be the other part of it. So well, <laughs> that, on board I mean, with the, the element of it. Right. I don't think that the involvement of the Environmental Commission from Berkeley Heights excludes uh, the county saying, oh, we want you to also be helping us at some other uh, county parks. I don't see that as an issue. Nope. I, I, I just have, have a vehicle to do that. Yeah. 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 Union County Connect is, is great. And I, th I think to David's point, we structured the proposal as a proposal to Union County and, yeah. you know, in terms of, uh, you know, training youth, you know, we're not, we don't feel that we need to filter it and, and only focus on Berkeley Heights. You know, it's um, right. Yeah, it sounds like we're the starting point. It's yeah. our high school and our community being the direct neighbor to bring the first set of volunteers in and then we kind of go from there. And one yeah. of our goals was to promote equitable access because that's what we do here. We work with, you know, deliberately work with kids uh, from different schools in Trenton and all these other places that have less access to forests. So that's part of the plan. Well, I mean, in fact, I don't know whether it's possible, but you know, we've got overburdened communities. I mean, it would be great if somehow yeah. we could involve kids from Plainfield, yeah. you know, from from towns that are overburdened, uh, get them uh, into the woods. Why yeah. not? That's my original expertise was all with kids out of jail and who had yeah. backgrounds. And that's often my preference to work with those. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I, I expect the county will view it too. That this should be a resource for kids from railway and kids from Plainfield um, right. and not just kids from Berkeley Heights. The, the, the philosophy of affordable housing works the same way. I mean, that's what, yeah, it, the vehicle's already there to, to do this. It's, it's, it's right. being more, less affluent into more affluent communities and helping in the community, so. Yeah. And one thing that is pretty clear to me, uh, you know, uh, Dan Bernier and uh, his uh, other assistant, Betty Ann Kelly, when she was working, they were stretched, you know, they were stretched out. They were, they were you know, stretched thin. I think they still are. They are completely stretched thin and they can't, you know, that's the team that's supposed to help on the Passaic River and they have two guys to do the chainsaw and forget it. So... Um, it's a great program, but it needs replication. It really needs to be replicated around the county. Yeah, and you need, you know, committed people who can work with youth to do that and community members. Yeah. Yeah. So we work with the Watershed Institute. We've tried to teach other groups around, like the Watershed Institute wasn't doing this. They have 500 acres completely run over with invasive species. So during COVID, for example, it, I'm on their board, but... We just sort of taught them by bringing them here 
how to give out plots to families. So now families have plots and they can take out the invasive species at their leisure on those plots. They don't have to come on a Sunday or a Saturday. It's their place and they can specialize in a particular species or a place, but it's working great. You know, it's expanding more integrity to parts of the forest that didn't have any hands on them before. It starts small. I'll, I'll point out that it's okay to start with like two kids or three, you know, right. and, and it's once, once every month maybe. And that's fine. Ours started that way too. So we have the 25, 30 kids occasionally here just because it's a reputation and they have fun, but that builds up over time. So I think um, small beginnings are wonderful and it's really important for the planet, the forest and the kids. And one great thing that the kids really, uh, I think plug into is that it's a global good. You know, you're not just like, it's not a little gardening exercise outside. Right. This is a global problem and they have a local action that will help that problem. And they're all very cognizant of climate change and species extinction. And so this way they get a sense of agency and purpose, community and an ecological literacy that they would otherwise be lacking. So it has so many beautiful knock-on effects with these, with these kids and with their parents, yeah. Their parents are signing up. They see those kids rosy cheeked going home happy for the first time all week. They sign up for the next week. We've got a bunch of parents now jumping into, but it, it starts small and then it just builds up gradually. I should also mention that Woods and Wayside International uh, is a member of the New Jersey Forest Task Force. And I don't know if you've been following that process, but there have been weekly meetings now for a few months and they've invited proposals. And one of the proposals that we submitted was doing a program very much like what we're proposing, you know, there in Berkeley Heights, Union County, um, but on a statewide basis. And yeah. that proposal has not gotten full discussion yet. So we don't know where it's yeah. going to go, but there, it has generated a fair bit of interest among the participants in the task yeah. force. Like the Youth Conservation Corps, some of you will remember that. It really needs to be reignited. And this is a, you know, local efforts to try to do that. I will uh, send this uh, letter of support to the county manager. Doug, I asked Angie who would the best person be to do it. And she said the county manager. Um, so thanks for coming tonight. Uh, we'll continue our conversation. And thanks to you, David and John as well. Uh, I think we've made a good connection. Uh, just yeah. to, just want to point out, John, that I did not know that Pat Shanley's uh, mother knew my wife. Uh -huh. uh, and my wife had had uh, tea with her mother because they were both painters. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's a, a nice connection. That's nice. That's great. Tea and paint. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like my so mother. we'll continue. We'll continue our conversation. I, uh, and I think we've run a little bit over. I was trying to hold it to a half hour. That's <laughs> uh, good. I got the notes. I'll send off the meeting minutes when I'm done. Thanks, John. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to talk to you. Right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody.